My name is Roberta Annan. I'm the founder and managing partner of Annan Capital Partners, ACP. ACP is headquartered in Accra, Ghana. Since its inception, we've worked with a few of the world's family offices and based between Europe, the Americas, Middle East, and we are embarking on very interesting projects. The first project that I'd like to talk about or highlight is our Creative Arts Fund that we are putting in place. In fact, I believe that the creative economy is a tool for inclusive growth and development of our continent for three reasons. The first reason is because the creative economy tends to employ a lot of young people. And we all know that there's a high rate of unemployment among the youth on the continent. And we also have quite a large amount of young people on the continent. In fact, the statistic is that it's 65% under the age of 25. And I see that as an investment potential and not a ticking time bomb. I feel the creative economy could provide a lot of entrepreneurs in the space with a much needed infrastructure and finance. The creative economy could actually drive Africa's economic growth. I feel Africa has missed out on the digital boom, industrial revolution, but the creative economy to me is how we can actually take the leadership role. And that is why I'm very interested in that. In fact, most people say the creative economy is very fragmented. In fact, there's 14 subsectors according to UNCTAD. But within these subsectors, I see great opportunity. And if you look at what is happening in the industry, in film, in music, in fashion on the continent, there's a huge interest from investors. Just recently, Netflix has kind of doubled up their investments in um, getting African content on their platforms. The likes of Vivian de Canoplas have made investment into, um, you know, film in Africa. Universal Music Group have established their base here on the continent by setting up a sub-Saharan Africa um, office in South Africa. So this goes to show that there is definitely a need and an interest from foreign investors into the creative space. Now, what needs to happen is we need to also have the opportunity to create the right infrastructures, whether it's intellectual property, education, you know, and ensuring that there's a robust pipeline for investors like our funds to look at. And we've done this by creating an approach which has taken us 10 years to build. We've built a pipeline and the presence in the industry, starting with fashion and then expanding into other facets of the creative economy gradually and really starting by giving grants and supporting with infrastructure, capacity building. And even now, what I can say is we've even accelerated this to creating a luxury accelerator, um, which is also looking at funding businesses in the creative space and supporting with, with them with business management for them to be able to grow to an extent where they can then get debt or investments from a fund like what we are creating. So we tackle the industry from a holistic point of view and I think that is the way to address these type of alternative asset classes that are not so popular for investors. So that is basically what ACP has been working on in the creative economy. The second space that we are in is technology, because I believe that there's technology also helps to scale because, of course, we're doing very limited trade on the continent. And I believe things like the AFTA will ensure and enhance that we do more business within Africa itself. But technology can help us scale. So we've made it a point to invest in a lot of ventures in the tech space that are helping businesses scale and meet new markets using digitization. And the third thing that is of importance to us is women's empowerment. So during the COVID pandemic, Anand Capital Partners partnered with Women's Empowerment Investment Group. It's a women's investment company in Ghana and Guba, Grow Unite Build Africa, to set up a stimulus package for women. In fact, it was quite overwhelming. We had about 4,000 applicants and um, looking to invest in 10 businesses out of the 4,000. And I, I was really impressed by the content that we got. In fact, a lot of the businesses were very, very well established and still lack 
funding and resources and had been heavily affected by the COVID. So we as entrepreneurs in our own right, having our own challenges, just decided that we were going to set this up to support the women. And we're hoping to actually um, expand this program and to see if we can get resources and support from external partners to support women. Because I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but in Ghana, we have 46% of the entrepreneurs are women. So there's a very large, in fact, we're number one or top three when it comes to female entrepreneurs on the around the globe. So you can tell that women here really take the necessary steps and impetus to start their own business but oftentimes they lack the opportunities to actually get funding to get the businesses to grow you know as they say like it's easy to actually start a business but to sustain it is quite daunting and a lot of businesses fall on the wayside because there's no funding to support them and we see this as an opportunity to bring to support some of the most brilliant ideas that you may find um, here on the continent so this is why we did the stimulus package and we're hoping to expand it but at acp we're very very committed to women another project we did during the pandemic was a kai fashion training program which was the partnership between the foundation aff the lot and adonai child Development Foundation. We have set up a project on the AFF called Artisans Hub. This is really focused on training and also kind of protecting the heritage and culture of African people by passing on from generation to generation that craftsmanship. And I think this is where we can actually position ourselves, you know, as major players if we can hone in and protect what is ours and what is dear to us so we're looking at transferring skills from generation to generation from cultures to culture and looking at the entire continent and so the Kari women the foundation Adonai Child Care Development Foundation work with Kari women and so we partnered to be able to like support them with skills development and training and also placing them in fashion houses established fashion houses across Ghana and this year we got Ophelia Crossland and Velma Accessories to accept to be part of it. And it was great. I mean, now the collection is being sold at The Lot, which is a retailer in Ghana. And it was really great when we had the, ex the exhibition and having the Kari woman who worked on the project showcase the work at Glitz Fashion Week. It was really amazing. And these are the type of things that we like to do to have that holistic approach to supporting people, not just by throwing money at them, but helping them gain a skill, helping them gain an education and be empowered because empowerment comes from inside. So yes, money solves a lot of problems, but if the innate and internal empowerment is not achieved, then oftentimes you, your work becomes futile. So we also try to help people with mentorship and hand-holding and guidance and of course it goes back to our ethers and our core values at ACP. The second reason is also female um, empowerment and support and I believe I'm giving the reason why I see the potential of in supporting female and because I believe that when you invest in women they also extend that investment into the community. And then the third aspect is the culture and heritage of our people. I think these days, people have become more sensitive about protecting culture and, um, and identity and heritage of your people, as you've seen in these recent riots on whether it's Black Lives Matter or NSAs. I think people have become more sensitive about who they are and want to be accepted and to be included. So diversity and inclusivity has become a topic of choice these days. And so we at ACP believe that the culture and heritage of Africans is very important to protect. And Africans should also be very much in charge of their own narrative. The narrative can no longer be told by others. It has to be told by Africans themselves. Because there's even an African proverb that says, until the lion learns to right the tale of the hunt is always going to be told by the hunter so i believe that africans are sitting up and they are taking charge of their own destinies and driving their own destinies and we want to be part of that conversation 
we also want to ensure that things are done in a peaceful and responsible manner that also allocates the right and necessary resources for our heritage and our culture to be protected as Africans. Thank you.